Okay, so we're going to finish off this uh, introduction series with uh, a little bit about custom classes because that is obviously an essential uh, component to, to programming. But, uh, you know, first let me give you guys a fun little teaser of uh, something that uh, you could think about down the road. Uh, let's go back over here to our gamescene.sks file, and you'll notice that I've uh, swapped out our little red bl uh, bricks for um, sprites that actually have a texture to them. So we've got these little kind of, kind of brick structures over here. And uh, each of them now has a, a an alpha mask, so it's not just the big uh, square that it was before. But otherwise, they're pretty much the same. I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna allow uh, rotation on them. And uh, you know, for that matter, I kind of don't even need to leave dynamic on there at that point either, uh, because I'm just gonna have our character uh, kind of uh, move in front of uh, or in back of them, and I'll show you how that's possible. Now, just keep in mind that at the moment, our Z position for our character is at zero, which by default, all of these are at zero as well, so it's kind of a crapshoot, you know, what's gonna happen. Um, you, you can't always rely on what you see here in the, the scene editor to be the same ordering of all these objects uh, at, at runtime. Uh, unless you specifically say, well, okay, this guy is going to be at one, right? So then he's above anything that's at zero and so on like that. But what we're actually going to do is make it so that um, it's going to change at runtime. So let's uh, head over here to our game scene, uh, dot Swift file. And if you remember, we've got this code that's already in here uh, that uh, iterates through our children and looks for some of these buildings. So let's just go ahead and just copy what we've got. And I'm going to go down to the update statement. I'm going to paste that in there. So we can still look for possible building in self.children. Traditionally, what you do here, those you usually just write for node in self.children. And then um, it doesn't really matter, but um, uh, let's go with kind of what's the convention here. So I'll say if node.name equals building. This time around, we don't really have to, we don't have to um, test to see if this is an SK sprite node because any node is going to have that Z position property. Uh, which is what we're going to want to affect here. So what we'll do is right if node uh, dot uh, first thing we're testing here is the position actually, not the Z position. So we're going to see if the Y position of this is greater than the player dot position dot Y. Now keep in mind this is going to happen for every frame for every building and that might sound like oh gosh I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear down my phone doing that it's good that the computer can't handle that it's too much work no it's not too much work um, and uh, let's see I think that's gonna go away there it goes alright so basically if uh, it, we're asking if visually if the, the the little brick thing here is above the player then this is gonna be a true statement uh, in which case, what we're going to want to do is actually put our um, brick structure uh, Z position b behind the player. All right, so we're going to say then node dot Z position is going to equal negative 100. Okay, else, and we can just get away with an else statement here. That means that the brick structure is actually below the character. Uh, so the character should seem to be in back of it, right? So in that case, we're going to bump up the Z position. And remember, our player is not changing at all here. It's just each one of these uh, buildings. So each one of them can have a different, well, slightly different Z position property. So when we run this now, and I think I'm getting all these errors because I probably have an extra extraneous closing block. Let's see. Remember that trick I told you before? There we go. I think we've got the right number now. Let's try that again. Okay, build succeeded. All right. So now we move around. Oh, well, you know what? There's one other little thing we got to do here. This this is probably working just fine, but but uh, because these two can't uh, you know intersect with each other, we can't really tell whether or not it's working. Maybe it's maybe kind of possible at some point. Um, but here's, here's something really cool, and I'll actually show you the difference between the, uh, the contact mask and the collision mask. So what we can do here is we can uh, tell our player that he is not allowed to collide with the building, all right? Just something else, which we haven't really defined. Uh, and then for our building over here, what we're going to do is we're going to say that uh, possible building 
Uh, actually, let's go ahead and just copy from here on out. The collision mask on this is just going to be set to zero. Okay, so he's, he's, he's not actually colliding with anything. And let's give that a test run. Oh, and, and of note, though, we're still testing the contact of them. Okay, it's just that their physical bodies can share the same space. Okay, so now when we go through here, see, it still says that you touched a building, right? But now they're overlapping, and if we walk... You know, we can kind of walk right through this guy, but that's okay. Because the important thing is, is that visually it kind of seems like, oh, okay, yeah, he just went like in back of that thing. And that's going to be the same case for all of these, right? So you can see his head's kind of, you know, in front of it, and then he goes into the back of it. And same thing over here, right? Okay, so I'm sure some of you are chomping at the bit to see how to set up a custom class. So we're going to go over here. I'm just clicking on any one of these files that I've already got, and I'm going to make a new file and give it a good classy name. Uh, for example, oh, I don't know. Let's just call it something like Castle. All right. And um, if you're a Cartoon Smart subscriber, you, you, you've actually got, if you're a yearly subscriber, you can actually get this. Uh, this artwork and a whole lot more for a top-down uh, game and same with the castle that I'll bring in here in just a moment so keep that in mind uh, and uh, yeah alright so our target is just gonna be the same file that we've been working with here play around and alright now we've now got a pretty bare-bones class here right what we're gonna do is import in sprite kit so we get to use all the fun sprite kit stuff that we've been doing previously uh, and then we just write class, and then you're going to repeat back the name of the file that you gave it. So just cla castle. Uh, don't have to put dot .swift in there. And then we're going to say that this is going to be a subclass of SK Sprite Node. So it's basically all the same things that a uh, SK Sprite Node can do, but we can write our own functions in here, give it different properties, okay, stuff like that. So it's, you know... It's a, a subclass of SK Sprite Node. Okay, so uh, for our purposes, just for right now, let's just put in here setup castle is going to just be the, the really just the one and only function I'm going to go ahead and put in here. Well, I guess actually just to show off um, that you can declare variables for this uh, castle class. Let's just put in here dudes. How about dudes in castle, right? Dudes in castle. It's going to be an int type. We'll just say equals zero. All right. So, um, but otherwise, yeah, let's get, skip on down here to our setup castle. And uh, if we wanted to, we could um, define the, the physics properties for this. So we could say, uh, or some of them, we could say physics body dot uh, category bit mask. Maybe at this point, what we should do is we should go back to our game scene dot swift file, come back over here to the top. And instead of putting something else in here, let's go ahead and just put in castle. So we'll just we'll also then replace all those instances of something else okay there they are with castle and castle okay that makes a little bit more sense now your enum types are one of these kind of oddballs you know we're actually declaring them outside of the class itself um, so we can uh, basically tap into these values in any other class all right so you'll notice that when we write uh, category bit mask equals and the, right away, you see that the body type is still is actually still there available to us, and uh, and of course all the the prop you know the values after that. So uh, c we've got uh, castle dot raw value over here, and then uh, again what we'll want to do is say that the collision bit mask is going to equal this time around. Put in here player. And then finally for our contact, we'll go ahead and listen out for the contact of it. Well, as well, so it's, uh, that's actually contest test bit mask, All right? So what we're not doing it though here is we're not listening to see if the, our other building collides with the castle. We just don't care about that, right? Let's just say it's unlikely. Uh, and then just to kind of make sure this is working, let's go ahead and just put in here print setup castle. Okay, all right. Now we got to go over here to our uh, game scene dot SKS file and actually put a castle in. Okay, so let's just drag out a color sprite here, and I've already got a, a castle um, texture in there. <laughs> kind of small compared to the other stuff I've got. 
Why is that so small? Did I not? Oh, maybe it's just kind of small. Um, certainly make it a little bit bigger. We'll, we'll cheat it. I should be upsizing the actual source image. But uh, that'll work for now. And then um, th the name in this case actually isn't going to matter that much. Uh, but let's just go ahead and just call it The Castle. Uh, because what we're going to do is go over here to... Where did it go to? I come having trouble finding it. It wants to tell me things are not selected. There we go. Uh, we're going to give it a custom class of castle right that's what we had in there before and now what I'm gonna do is just the same exact thing previously I'm gonna set the alpha mask in there you know what because I moved around I, th I think what we're seeing here is this is the actual size of it but I moved around one of the images from I, I dropped into there and into there so maybe I might have messed things up a little bit well that's okay uh, you know what while while it's being goofy on us here i'll try one more time we'll just put a bounding circle in there because i think yeah all right that's okay um maybe a bug maybe just something i did all right so a toggle off affected by gravity allows rotation we don't want that and uh let's not put dynamic in there either all right so uh main point though is we have a custom class of castle we don't have to worry about module and what we can do is now head back over here to our game scene.swift file actually you know what, before you do anything to save that out and uh, then what we will do is similar to what we did before here well actually you know what let's combine these together instead of putting possible building in here for the name again let's go ahead with the the normal convention put in here node and we'll just have to change out what we've previously got node 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 right okay found a building uh but now what we'll do is make our little for statement do a little bit more work so we're going to say if let and then let's just say a castle instead of the castle so it's not confusing what that uh the name i gave it uh so we're going to say if a castle equals node as castle all right so really what we're just checking to see is that, okay can we make a castle out of the node that you're kind of looking at here remember this is going to cycle through all the children that we've got in the scene which are not really that many right now five or six uh and if it can make one of them into a castle right so if it can cast this node as a castle then we've suddenly got this you know variable that we can work with inside of this if statement all right we, don't, we can't work with it outside of there but it within here we can right so we can just say a castle dot set up castle right because that is a function inside of our castle class and you'll notice uh you know if this is working right um you get the other properties in here dudes and castle we could set that up as well yeah, or you know set that property so we could say a castle dot dudes and castle equals five okay uh, but what's really going to tell us if this is working is if we run this uh, this function gets called and we see inside of here that um you know setup castle ran in the output window so let's give it a shot hopefully that uh, little warning goes away i'm not sure what that's there for let's see oh see yeah that was the plot thickens with this weirdo file over here again i did something during the <laughs> my little mystery hidden uh, break that you guys didn't see but yep sure enough so we've got uh it, it does say that we set up that castle and uh we can't i mean we yeah we can't go collide with it right now because well if, if we did what you know i was saying earlier is we want to be able to see that um the, the physics contact statement is working but we didn't actually set that up all the way so uh, let's head back over here to our game scene file and uh, you know again if you just kind of want to see hey was this actually working we can continue with our else if statements over here and so in this case it would be player castle right touch the castle touch the castle castle uh yeah well you know what i would because remember last time what we did is we changed the a and the b i'd probably say if you're gonna do that keep doing that right so 
So then, so in both cases here, player is the first thing we check, castle is the first thing, but we, we're swapping those around. Okay, all right, so let's, uh, yeah, let's give it a, one more shot. Can we bump into it? And know that we bumped into it. That's the real thing. That's the real question here. All right. Bum, bum, bum. And sure enough, I saw at some point up there. Yep. All right, touched a castle. Yeah, that is working. And, uh, you know, just keep in mind that uh, obviously we, we haven't done that much here. But, um, you know, what we have done is, I think, significant. And there's all sorts of things that you can do uh, to... Um, with just the code that you've got, just being able to uh, connect with something and, 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 you know, push something around is what we had in an earlier incarnation of this, right? We're moving those red bricks around. And then you've also got the, all the options that you got that, uh, that are available to you in the, um, with the actions over here. So for example, you know, you could kind of set up a whole little world, just, you know, testing to see if maybe this guy can navigate his way through some of these bricks without getting touched. Right. So you could have a, um, you know, let's put a move action on one of these guys. Okay. I, I'm not sure which one that is, but let's go over here. And, uh, so we're going to move him, move this plus 200. Right, so let's see. Okay, so that one right there. And then you can copy this out, paste it over here. Um, make this be, see, it's doing that thing again. Well, let me edit. All right, there we go, negative 200. So then once um, you've got both of them in there, you can actually loop both of them. So you just have to have them both selected, click on loop. And then you suddenly got a little bit of a, kind of a level being set up just right there so you know can you make it past that thing without uh, without uh, colliding with it and if you do who knows what happens maybe you uh, your your character is dead or something like that you know and that would just be a matter of uh, you know you have a variable up here that uh, you know a boolean variable like uh, is dead you know bool obviously initially falls but then what happens you know if, if you run into something then suddenly what you know is dead equals true and then from that point you know you call a function kill off player which obviously I haven't written but then at that point you could you know reset the player back to its original position you could deduct from a score you know that's um, it's really just kind of the, the logic involved in uh, making any game right so hopefully this has been a uh, good introduction to um, to sprite kit if you guys want to see more incredible sprite kit and swift gaming tutorials we have tons over at uh, cartoonsmart.com and uh yeah and and udemy and all these other places that you can watch video tutorials i'm probably there